guess let's jump into Horizon a little bit. That, that should be a fun little thing that we can do. But let's do a proper story introduction. And I just want to shout out the de developers at Guerrilla Games because, you know, they're, I believe, Danish, right? They're in Denmark. The Denmarkians, the Denmarkese. I believe it's Danish, right? I'm not wrong on that. Don't you eat Danishes? I don't. I don't like bread. Fuck bread. <laughs> I don't fuck with any of that shit. Oh yeah, bread. Keep, keep, keep vamping while I while I rack my memory. <laughs> that uh, definitely they're, they're Dutch. Dutch. Is that the thing? I'm gonna Google that right now. Oh, that I'm makes just, that makes sense because they're just fucking high all the time. Then yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just doing this purely from memory, of course. You know, I, Not, I believe I you're right. I didn't look it up. I didn't look it up or anything. As a straight white male, we we know that I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lacking in knowledge. Uh. Fucking shit. And it's censorship if you tell me that's not true. So I will I will make an angry tweet about it. And then a bunch of old white ladies are gonna give me money. Well, you know, despite my complexion, I am indeed uh what, what Kyle's people might refer to as a dirty browner. So I'm glad we have an ascended one here to, to give us the proper knowledge of how the world works. That's right. You could join me in my massive grift and you could just you could just tell them, you know, like, hey, don't worry, I'm I'm I you know, I I may I may be brown, but I also hate brown people and then they'll give you money too. Turns out they're really dumb with who they give their money to. Is there a Candace you Owens of like Mexican people? Is there an equivalent uh, yeah. there? We're, we're gonna make one. Oh shit! You just I have be... to change your last name to Owens. I don't know if I can do that. No, that's a step too far. Uh, all right. Hey, yeah, gorilla, gorilla. They are <laughs> they are Dutch. They are from the They're... Dutch area. If they go on a plane to visit uh, Sony America, are they called the Flying Dutchman? Can see, I can't. I can't. I, I can't. I was about to say, I can't gauge Kyle's face. All I see is his Twitter face. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the story of Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, you play as the most persecuted, uh, most persecuted minority of all time in all human existence, a, uh, a ginger girl, a Variety magazine ginger girl. Um, you know, it's it's very accurate to real life because you know you're born from a machine, as all gingers are, and you get ostracized for that. Which you know you probably had your way coming, being fucking born from a machine and all that shit. It's kind of your fault. I don't know what to tell you. And like gingers, gingers, like I'm very pro like people, you know, I like to think of myself as, as fairly progressive, but gingers deserve to be oppressed. They're not humans. <laughs> oh, shit. I feel kind of bad because I feel like someone might take that seriously. <laughs> no, it's all holds barred. We, the, the, the no pissy vow go, goes for the audience as well. If you're watching, you, 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 you're, you're partaking in this. I don't know what to tell you. If you're, a, if you're a ginger and you're upset, tweet angry things at me, and then gonna, I will, I will tweet you pictures of my feet. Why you gotta, why you gotta fucking throw hands with Ronald Weasley, dude? What did he ever do? To no, you? I'm, I'm not, I'm not throwing hands. I'm throwing feet. Is, is Ron Weasley a ginger? Or is he just a red? What's the difference between a ginger and a redhead? No, nothing. Is it like freckles or something? I think ginger is like a state of mind. But you know, <laughs> you decide to be ginger. <laughs> oh shit! But you know what? Uh. A Aloy's not that bad. She has a rosacea. I have a rosacea, which, you know, like, increases her assholeness by, like, 50%. So, you know what? At least she has that going for her. But, uh, so, c coming off the back of Horizon Zero Dawn, Forbidden West, um, it turns out the thing you killed isn't dead, and uh, Aloy doesn't really like that. So you have to go west to track down Lance Riddick, because he sounds really cool, and you just want to be around him as much as you can, because he sounds cool. But you have to go west, and uh, there's like these different tribes, they kind of had on the falling out with the main governments that you've been around. And so you kind of have to go around fixing like their little political issues so that you can go further west and find out what the heck's going on. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's basically, I think, as much as you can say about the story of Forbidden West without getting, like, too spoilery. The, the only thing I'll say is the biggest appeal of the story of Horizon Zero Dawn was figuring out why the world is the way it is. Like, and they go into, like, so much detail. Like, why are the machines like this? Why, if this is, a, is an apocalypse, why is there vegetation? And so unraveling that was, like, was genuinely probably my favorite part of the entire game for the, uh, for the original title and once you already have those cards laid out in the sequel there's not that appeal they they, they do something a little bit different but it's not really the same would, would would you guys say that's pretty accurate yeah i'd say it's fair yeah like i i think it takes a little while for it to get going they do drop a fairly early like when you fairly early on 
once you like find Lance Riddick, like they drop a pretty big story bomb that is just sort of like what, and it's it's a different kind of what the fuck. It's definitely not the same though. Now that you sort of know the world and it how it exists, and it's just like yeah, it, it is. A, it was a little bit sort of. It's laughing. like going from a. It's like. It's like going from an S tier mystery to like maybe like a B tier mystery, and just like even in com like it, there's nothing wrong with it like in of itself. It's just in comparison, it's a little bit of a drop. Yeah. Well, I feel like I mean there was no real option otherwise. Like you can't you can't really up the ante on the mystery there when when you've already done the big reveal of how the world became the way it is and all that. So like I don't fault them for it. Yeah. But I do I do think your point about it being not as narratively like compelling jaw jaw dropping in terms of like the the twists and turns and stuff like that but i thought the narrative that that we got in the story was still very interesting i thought the characters felt felt interesting i think the, the story and all the different things that come to play i think they were pretty good the the twists and turns that they had to do without without getting spoilery felt a little paint by numbers it was it was you know whether it was things like is this person going to be good or bad? Things like, like a lot of things were things that you could kind of see coming, but again, like there's so many things you can do to to do twists that are super new and that that feel completely fresh. So I didn't think any of it was bad. It just, uh, I mean, and honestly, I, I will talk a little bit more when we get to Elden Ring. Like, like it would have been, and at one point it was probably probably going to be my game of the year for the way it really appealed to me but i think this one the focus was less on the twists and less on the shock factor and more on okay we've seen why the world is the way it is we've seen how the world is now can we bring this world that's left together to save it which i thought was a really interesting you know and really kind of one of the only few directions to go with a sequel and i thought they did a very good job of it I thought they really did a good job with all the uh, character stuff too. Like not not even necessarily the main quest, just sitting there chatting with with your companions and your your little Mass Effect base. I just everyone was really well written. You come to like really care about all of them. Yeah. Um, like I one of the things is that like the fur in the first game, the real big hook and what kept me going and and what like we've already talked about is that like that through line story of like mystery what's going on and everything that was what shown while like all the side characters and like anything that what you know wasn't ted farrow like sort of didn't matter like all the actual people they barely had personalities like i couldn't remember half of the people when they got reintroduced in forbidden west but like Forbidden West does a lot better of developing these characters and your allies. And now I haven't finished the whole thing yet, but like as, as far as I am right now, like it's been a lot more interesting and like the characters and people that you talk to and everything all feels better. And it's now that it's not just the mystery. It, it's funny that you mentioned the, uh, the the side characters not really being important in um, in the first game because uh, it's not really much spoil. Like it, it opens whatever, and your buddy comes up to you like, "Hey, look, it's me, Varl from the first game. We're like best friends." And I had to sit there. I'm just like, "Who the fuck are you?" I, I I played through Horizon three times and I barely remember who this dude is. Yeah, but uh, no, they they definitely take that. They actually do something worthwhile this time around, so that's cool. This this is maybe like a tangentially related thing, but Kyle, how the fuck did you beat this game so soon? Like, I I, I want your ability to just be able to mainline the the main am, quest, not do any of the side shit. Okay. I I just I'm so mad because somehow like it took me six months to beat Final Fantasy fourteen, and he blew through it in like a month and a half. He's beaten Elden Ring like three times already, and I'm like halfway through it. He beats Horizon before her Elden Ring comes out. Like, how do you do it? I'm uh, so God, you you do so much shit with your life. You're such like an accomplished motherfucker. You're you're well, juggling all uh, this stuff, I, and you still manage to get through it. I'm just like, man, it's a, it's it's a fucking white boy powers or something. I don't know what to tell you, man. You're fucking magical. Well, it is an unhealthy ability to function on little to no sleep. Yeah, I do also not always spend a lot of t don't always spend a lot of time exploring and doing optional side stuff. 
um, which, and again, I'll talk a little bit later with, with Elden Ring because it's actually changed my, my approach, but a lot of times I will, I will do for things that I know are going to be a massive undertaking and I know I only have limited time. I do as much as I can to just mainline the story and the, the most important side things. If there's a random obscure NPC in an area, I'm not necessarily going to do their side content, but if it involves characters that are directly involved with the story, I'm going to do what I can. And then if I feel like, okay, this isn't doing anything for the narrative, then I'm going to move on. Um, and, and a lot of times I've gone back to games later and done side things, but it's just in, in the moment where I only have so much time to play things and so many things that I want to play, it's usually spent less doing that. It takes a lot for a game to make me want to spend the little extra time I have to, to do all the extra side things. But it definitely is also like one of those things where it's just, I'll start playing at like, you know, four or five in the afternoon and play until like four or five in the morning. Shit. It, it, it can be, or start at like eight in the morning and play till 10 o'clock at night. It's just, it's, it's not a healthy approach, but I, I just lose track of time when I get really into stuff. And as I'm making progress, it's like, oh, I just, you know, I'm almost done with this chapter. No, or oh there's only three chapters left and it just becomes just, just uh, continuous there's always a new reason to keep going uh my your, your third kyle's party is, is is kyle the normal one and it, it's just my mild autism brain that won't allow me to mainline shit or, or is kyle the weird one i i i honestly i don't know because i can't i cannot just mainline anything either but i definitely have ushiny problems like i if i have to Anytime a game says go this way, I immediately go the opposite direction. Like I, it, it is just functionally, I cannot just mainline. <laughs> I've tried so hard. I, I got to the point where I just started ignoring like the question marks. I'm just like, if it's not like a marked side quest or whatever, I'm not gonna bother with it. But uh, that said, the um, game of Platinum's not that bad. It's just wrapping up like some of the more major side quests. So if you're a trophy hunter, there you go. It's not that bad. Um, I guess just to jump over to the gameplay, then we can jump over to Elden Ring. I, I don't get why some people don't, or I don't get why people tend to, I want to say, kind of trash the combat. Because I really, that, that's probably one of the biggest appeals of the game to me is because you have so many different weapons to choose from, different elements, enemies, weak points. They have their own strengths and weaknesses. There's melee, just like, yeah, ev every single battle I would go into, there's like a million different ways you can go about it. And um, this has like so many more machines than the previous game, and each kind of machine has like three, four different variants too. So you're just kind of scanning to see what you're doing on the fly, swapping weapons out. Um, admittedly, this this time around, I was a little bit of a basic bitch. I would just stick with a hunter bow, just chipping off uh, components to get the uh, to get like little chunks of damage off of them. But no, I I, I loved every minute of playing this game. I do feel like they made some of the things worse like the bow feels the best to use this time around like i find myself not using the trip wires and the rope caster as much as i did when i was playing zero dawn because it doesn't feel like they have as much effect i don't think they go as far either because i remember yeah. in the first game you could you could set them pretty damn far yeah it, it it's it just it I think that's the only complaint I have about the combat. Like everything else is fine. Like I love shooting parts off robot dinosaurs. It's fun to, you know, take on a thunder jaw and remove its cannons and then destroy it with its own weapon. You know, so, I, I was, I was rewatching a, um, a documentary that no clip did on the first game. And they said the first enemy they tested out with like the gameplay was the thunder jaw. I'm just like, oh yeah, that, I guess that figures. That's why that's like the funnest enemy to fight. That's why it has so many components you can shoot off and use its own weapons and shit. It's uh, and I, I just love the gameplay here. But yeah. one one complaint, uh, I I kind of I kind of stopped complaining about it as I went on. Um, the climbing like the you, you scan to see what you can climb and like on one hand she's like oh it's like diegetic she has like the focus that makes sense but like as you're playing the game you're just like i don't know this feels a little bit too video gamey where you're telling me exactly where i can go versus um like i know the industry's been trying pretty hard to like move away from uncharted 2's like oh look that brick is yellow that probably means you can climb onto it but that still feels more natural than like literally highlighting everything you can climb in the world. Yeah, like so, and 
it, well, well, again, this is like pre Elden Ring sort of like teasing, but like I am tired of the focus in all the games. Like every game has a version of Batman you know, Vision, spoken, Witcher yeah. Vision, Hitman Vision, uh, Ghost of Tsushima Vision. Like every game has that stupid thing. It's where you can see where everything is. And like going into Elden Ring, where it's just like you gotta fucking look for stuff. You don't get a, a special button that reveals all the little collectibles. You just either pick them up or you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I, I hate that because also like I feel like I have to be clicking it all the time because of that thing where the world is designed in a way where. You have one specific place on this mountain you need to climb to get to the top to get to do whatever you need to do. And that's the way the level and the world is designed. So they design around people clicking that all the time. So you have to have it on all the time just to know where you're going. Whereas And it's, and it's not even you, a toggle, you have to like constantly be pressing it like every twenty exactly. steps or whatever. And like I have to it it's the, so it just like affects the game design and like there is a little bit without it but it, it still is helping like after i spent like 10 minutes fucking up dinosaurs and then i have to be hitting the focus button constantly to make sure i picked up all the parts that i blew off because i wasn't able to do it while i'm being chased down uh like you it, know, feels and, like, it feels like it feels like there should have just been like an option in the settings just like hey do you just want like these pickup things to always show because yeah, it's there weird like uh the there is setting for that oh is there okay well fuck me then i'm not as smart as kyle <laughs> i i know there was i thought there was a setting i know there was a setting for like the the cliff sides and like re- the where to climb i didn't realize there was one for the items too oh shit okay yeah yeah there's there's one for both because i that's you guys are talking about like having this problem with this and i i didn't have this problem only because i turned those on knowing that that was the thing that was going to frustrate me mm-hmm. but yeah it, it's it, it, it's kind of buried which I don't like when things like that get get buried up in in settings. You got to dig for it to find it. But yeah, there there's some stuff in there that makes that a l- less of a a nuisance, which was nice. Damn, I, sh- I should have put that on. I know. Um, I think like the lot is that like an accessibility thing, or is that just like in video or whatever? I think it's under accessibility, if I recall correctly. Um, because I remember there there was something like that that I turned on in um, The Last of Us Two. It, it's uh, it's like a auto pickup, so you don't have to like mash triangle to pick shit up. And like it was nice, but then I'm just like, oh wait, no, now I don't even now I don't know what I'm picking up because I don't have like the visual. Just like, oh, that's exactly what I'm doing, triangle, whatever. But, yeah, uh, so this just shows where the loot is. It doesn't, which is nice, doesn't automatically pick it up for you, but it shows where the loot is and like what tier it is, of loot it is, which is nice. So you it, still get that, like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm picking up, but it's not as much of it, a pain to have to find everything. It feels weird visually because it's like you can see like Ridgewood from like a mile away. It's a big, tall, freaking like bear, twigs, whatever. But then all, all the other items, they have like these little blue butterflies to like to denote like, hey, you should probably pick this shit up. Um, but then they kind of just have it where you have to scan also. I guess that's optional, but um, I, I, I kind of wish it didn't do because I, I, I know the first game had this. And this was before Red Dead 2, but the Red Dead 2-ification of, like, picking shit up where you have to, like, go over to it. You have to pick it. It takes, like, a second or two. And, like, this one, it's not too bad. It's just a quick little thing. But with the amount of shit you're picking up, it would have been nice if you could just keep your full sprinting momentum and pick shit up. But that's, yeah. that's, I, I would love to see a tracker see exactly how many things I picked up and like just multiply that by like however long it takes to grab it. Be like, oh, I spent two hours of this game doing nothing but picking up twigs. That's cool. It's a hundred percent why I couldn't get into Red Dead Two yeah. because of how long it took to pick stuff up. It just, it just got so frustrating. It, it's weird because like <laughs> the, like the optimal way to play that game is to like loot everyone you kill, but it's just like okay, well, I killed thirty dudes and I gotta walk over each of them. It's gonna take five seconds to loot them. It's it's fucking annoying. Crafting needs to stop being a thing. Like I don't I like appreci- crafting in games. I appre- I can appreciate it if crafting has like its place. Like Minecraft is a game where you craft things. That's fine. 
but like you don't need to jam it into every game that exists like elden ring does not need craft i'm sorry like i love the game it but i fucking have crafted like two items the entire game like it has, it does not need it I, fucking collecting these stupid cookbook i'm sorry it's all like it's all like it. <laughs> go on my go fucking rip it off <laughs> Now, someone's going to come find me on Twitter and, like, say I, you know, hate everything because I dared criticize Elden Ring for something. Uh, f- fuck Twitter, people. Twitter people don't know what's up. Yeah, um, crafting in most games just feels like an add-on. And, and like, and, I mean, I, like, with, um, with Horizon, I just crafted what I needed to refill inventory for stuff. It's like, I'd much rather just go to an NPC and buy it. It's way easier. Like, oh, you have to you have to find the right resources, and then you have to craft it. And it's like, okay, but this is just artificially getting me to play more. But it's getting me to do the thing that I don't want to do in this game, which is which is hunt down resources. That's not the appeal of this game. I got into so many situations. There, there's like those explosive uh, spears you can throw, whatever. And um, they, they use like rare resources. I'm just like, well, fuck. I don't want to craft any of that shit. Those are like rare resources. I only got like thirty of those. And so I, I just hate running to that shit. Like if it's just like ammo you pick up, I would have been fine with it. Uh, I will say it's nice that um, th- like your stuff will get like automatically sent to your stash instead of like just it all cl- cluttering your inventory. Because that was a big issue in the first game. Just like oh, I have too much wood. I can't pick up this mission critical thing. I need to pick up. Um, and Aloy will let you know every time. Aloy, I'm not, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be that guy, not trying to be misogynist or nothing, but man, that ginger girl does not shut the fuck up. She, it's like every five seconds. I wonder, th- so this will go to my stash. I can pick this up from my stash. This will go in my stash. I can pick this up from my stash. My stash. I should check my stash. <laughs> stash. 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 <laughs> I can climb that. I can try to use it by rope. It's, it's, man, she, like, I think they actually put a patch out to like slightly reduce it, but I was still mm. playing it when they pushed it out. I was just like, oh no, it's still, it's still a bit much. It's, it's not like the worst thing in the world. It's mostly just funny. I, like the thing that bothers me the most, like it, it's, yeah, it's not like objectively a bad thing, but there were several times when I was playing where I would get into a new area and Aloy would tell me the solution to an environmental puzzle before I even had a chance to check out the entire area. She was already like, I should check out that platform. I should jump over there. I should pull this thing down. Like, give me a chance to do it. It's like, it's like shit, I was only here for five seconds. I don't, <laughs> I don't even turn the camera around. Who's playing this game? Are you playing me? Like, is there something weird going on here? It's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's something. It, it like, like, I wouldn't mind, like, if it was just, like, a button prompt, like, hey, you want a hint? And then she'll speak up or whatever, but... She, she's really eager to get that shit. You know what? The world's dying on me. She doesn't have time to fuck around with our dumb asses trying to solve this puzzle. You gotta get shit done. It, it is in character for Aloy to have absolutely no patience. So, you know, I, maybe maybe it's intentional. She's traveling the world all by herself. She's kind of, kind of a loner. I guess it makes sense that she talks to herself all the time. Mm-hmm. Leaving little... Maybe she's leaving, like, little Bioshock diaries for everyone to listen to. Ah, uh, shit. But you know what? Let's, uh... I, I haven't played it, but the two of you have, have been uh, very very deep in Elden Ring, if you want to jump into that. And then even if... Because uh, I, w- I was going to mention the open world for Horizon, but these are like two like such polar opposites to how to approach open worlds, quests... Uh, not even linearity, I guess, but just complete polar opposites if you two want to jump into that. I actually, I actually don't know if I find them to be polar opposites in terms of their approach to the open world. It, it actually, it, it actually feels somewhat similar, especially like even just the concept of like traveling around in Horizon. In order to get new fast travel points, you have to go to bonfires. Um, I, I, I think the big difference. <laughs> I think it's more so like all like but, the icons and shit and like stuff like being yeah. like explicitly labeled, right? Yeah, I think that's that's really the only big difference is just nothing in Elden Ring gives you a a label or a quest guide everything is just figured out which can sometimes be a little bit frustrating shout out to people who write guides on the internet for helping my dumbass out but 
I think in general, I, I thought the approach is, is, is somewhat similar. I, I don't think... I, I think the big thing with both of them is neither of the open worlds feel empty. They feel like everywhere I go, there is something happening, whether it's environmentally, whether it's with, with other characters in the game, there's things to fight, there's different things to fight, there's different scenery you're seeing, different paths, different weather, like there's just different things. It doesn't feel like, oh god, I'm about to have to go through this giant ass plane and it's going to take me 30 minutes to ride through it and I'm going to see like five enemies and what was the point of making it this big? I, I thought with both, even though they're, they're fairly large open worlds, it feels very like traveling through the world feels fun. It feels neat. I'm someone who is so burnt out by open world games, but I found myself in both of them not really fast traveling that often unless I was trying to get something done quickly. But I was kind of like, yeah, I don't mind going for the ride because there's some cool shit that happens. And obviously in, in Elden Ring, a lot of times you just get random things popping out at you and scaring the shit out of you. But even in Horizon, it was just like, it was just cool to go through the environment and uncover the stuff that was around. So I, th I thought both did a really good job of, of filling out their open worlds. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Did, did I, we really need four giant open world games like this sort of span there, there was pokemon arceus dying light 2 with well, this fucking 500 hours or whatever uh horizon and now eldering they're all just fucking giant open world games Did we, like I, I i'm with you i'm fucking sick of open world games with with some of these kind of maybe being the exception but i'm still just like fuck i just give me some, carry something nice and short get, give me a uh, shadow warrior 3 give me give me low wing i i think yeah, I, would, from... I would go ahead go <laughs> um, I, I was just gonna say, I think for me, like, I definitely appreciate games like Horizon and Elden Ring, where like the open world feels on purpose. Where it's like, when I'm exploring an Elden Ring, I can find shit and it'll be interesting. Like, I will find a new item. I may not be able to use it, but like, hey, I found this really cool axe because I dared to go into this random area and there were some enemies and a cool chest in this area um or like horizon i'll find a new dinosaur that i haven't fought yet and get some new parts and maybe be able to craft something new god crap but like you you'll get to go into these new areas and be like oh this is something neat i'm rewarded for exploring this open world um and then you have something like assassin's creed and i'm i'm going off of odyssey because i didn't play valhalla but like assassin's creed odyssey had a massive open world and a whole bunch of question marks on your map to find but you never found anything interesting at the question marks it was fucking collectibles that like once you got 50 of them a trophy popped up or you know a random i don't know bear like you you don't get anything and you're spending like 20 minutes between question marks because the world is massive because what they think we want is giant world and like we want i'd rather have a dense world that's smaller than a gigantic open world that takes me 20 minutes to walk around uh just to get from point a to b because I'm not looking at anything in the world. It's just like, God, I, I don't want to, I'm not doing anything. It's why, why am I traveling? I, if I wanted to spend 20 minutes uh, going from point A to point B, I'd like drive to, you know, an arcade or something. I can don't, travel don't, on my own time. Don't you want a uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey sized uh, Yakuza game? No. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely with you on there. Like, the the denser, the better. As long as there's interesting shit, I just don't want big open planes of fucking nothing going on. And it, it seems like Elden Ring kind of delivers on that. Um, 